Hey guys, welcome back to part two of applications of bioinformatics. On today's video, we're going to be discussing the real world domains that you actually apply your bioinformatics knowledge to the many data types to make an impact in our world. If you're new here, hi, and if you're not, hello again. My name is Georgia, and I've been working in bioinformatics for coming up to five years now. And I share on this channel all about 101s of the world of bioinformatics. So if that's up your street, don't forget to hit subscribe and let's get into today's video. First up is the most obvious medicine or genomic medicine specifically. Specifically. The advances in bioinformatics have literally transformed healthcare as we know it today. In the UK, when you go into an NHS hospital, you can well, you can't just like get it done, but if it was needed, you'd be able to have maybe even your whole genome sequence to help diagnose what might be wrong with you or what type of cancer you might have to help give you better treatment. This is incredible. And especially with cancer, cancer is literally a disease of the genome. So it's amazing that we have these real world applications of bioinformatics. Often in the hospitals, you will have clinical bioinformaticians that are working to analyze the data in house. And then there'll be a lot of companies associated with the medical practices that probably have their own bioinformaticians to doing all of this work. So there's loads of ways to apply bioinformatics in medicine and specifically genomic medicine. The second application of bioinformatics is in cancer research and oncology. Cancer research is a very well-funded research domain, which means there's a lot of money going around for sequencing, which is fantastic for advancing forward our knowledge and in providing more information to then guide changes in personalized treatment. You can analyze the mutations in a cancer. You might be able to predict which drug should be given to a certain patient and we already know that different cancers with different mutations respond differently. We also know that some environmental causes have certain genetic signatures that we can pick up to identify what might have caused somebody's cancer. In terms of the job roles in this space, you obviously have researchers and computational bioinformaticians working in cancer research groups and you might also have cancer bioinformaticians in the hospitals, analyzing the cancer bioinformatics data specifically. Also, if there's companies that are trying to understand and develop drugs, they might be analyzing the data on their end to help them guide their drug development. I've been working as a cancer bioinformatician for the past year and a half in a cancer research group. So here's evidence that there is, yeah, this is an application. Domain number three, where bioinformaticians can apply their knowledge to, is in the world of virology and infectious disease. So this was actually my first job that I had, which was mega interesting. So bioinformatics is really useful to look at how different viruses and parasites are evolving over time. And this can help us understand about the spread of infection and disease. And we saw this in the pandemic, right? Everyone was sequenced, say everyone. Fortunate countries were sequencing the genomes of the COVID viruses that were circulating throughout the world. And they were looking at genetic changes. Well, actually I was looking at this, looking at um, genetic changes in the virus. And then they could use that to then track which different strains might have been spreading off, which strains were more, had a higher R rate than others. And what was incredible about the pandemic and i know there was like so much loss and harm but one thing that was very incredible about the pandemic was it showed us the power of real-time genomic surveillance and how if you can do it in real time and then implement decisions in public health you can literally save lives when you're going through a disaster. And bioinformaticians were at the heart of this in the pandemic. They were the ones analyzing the sequence data. They're the ones finding the variants. They're the ones tracking the variants. So a very, very interesting domain to be in. And also we saw this for COVID, but obviously there's so many other viruses that are out there. There's loads of other parasites that are out there. And there are loads of efforts around the world to try and do 
this kind of surveillance on the genetics of the parasites and viruses around the world to understand why some of them are spreading more intensely in some places rather than others. So this kind of field could be called an epidemiological bioinformatician, maybe more kind of population genetics bioinformatician, or specifically a bioinformatician working in disease surveillance. So very cool domain to be in, even if you are away from the human genetics, which I know a lot of us love. Another place where bioinformaticians can get their little hands dirty all over a keyboard is in ecology and environmental sciences. So ecology is actually something I've been understanding a bit more recently. I've been analysing spatial data and the ecologists have been uh, pretty good at spatial analysis for quite a while. So uh, don't ever forget that when you're doing spatial analysis, go and check out the ecology stats, please. But anyway, going back, genetics and bioinformatics analysis is very handy when you're wanting to see the effect of climate change on populations. So bioinformaticians can analyse genomes in places where there's been climate disasters or strong climate change and have a look at how the climate was affecting like the changes in the biological data that they're analysing. This might be even like the soil data that they're analysing and looking at the composition of microbes in there or you might be looking at changes in abundance of a certain species so doing things like metagenomics welcome which is like one of the biggest funders of research like this year or last year i think it was last year last year announced that like climate change was one of like the biggest things one of the pillars that they wanted to prioritize funding to so it is a growing field in informatics to be analyzing data related to climate change Next up, another domain where bioinformaticians apply their knowledge to is plants. So I, um, I avoided all my plant biology lectures. Um, I didn't take any plant genetics modules because I'm sorry, I, I, hated, I hated plants. I still quite don't understand plants. However, there is a huge field of plant bioinformatics and this is mainly to do with things like agriculture. And also plants have like really interesting genomes. Um, I think like the wheat genome is one of the most complex crop genomes. It literally has a hexaploid genome with 42 chromosomes. But it's a very, very cool bioinformatics domain to be working in because of the complex nature of the chromosomes that you're dealing with in plant genetics. So particularly in farming and in agriculture, you want to make food better and more resilient. So there's a load of work to do in this space in the bioinformatics of analyzing the plant data. There's like a whole institutes centered around plant genetics bioinformatics. So if you love plants and you love coding, then boy, are you in for a good time. And then finally, another domain where bioinformaticians can apply their knowledge is in the world of genome editing. So ever since we had the revolution of, God, what is this fringe? It's like being back in school. Um, <laughs> we had the revolution of CRISPR-Cas9 back when I was at uni and everyone was like oh my god this is amazing. The revolution of CRISPR basically changed the capabilities of genome editing. Now it's super easy to just go and chop and change a base and it means that there's loads of analysis that comes out of these types of experiments because you can go in and do a massive screen and be like chop 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 and the bioinformatician needs to do some analysis to see what on earth those genetic changes did um, in the experiment. So it's a really huge field to be in and bioinformaticians are very much needed in the gene editing world. I think we recently had um, like one of the first gene editing therapies was just approved for use in the UK. God, I can't quote that without looking that up. I swear I went to a thing on it. No, it was a sickle cell one. Oh, it's, just, it's in America in 2023 right uh just for just for reference i had a bereavement year last year and my i feel like 2024 didn't happen <laughs> okay in 2023 the fda approved the first cell-based gene therapy to treat sickle cell disease yeah very cool ah and then in 2025 NHS have posted revolutionary gene editing therapy for sickle cell offers hope of a cure for NHS patients. So, okay, we've just 
like we're just getting it into the NHS now. Very cool to see like the advancement of like a technology and then the bioinformaticians analyzing things and then now it's like a, a genetic medicine um, which I imagine like 20 years ago was like uh, unheard of. So very, very, very amazing. And bioinformaticians, there we are, analyzing said data. So from cancer research to agriculture, there's loads of different domains that you can apply your bioinformatics knowledge to. These were just a few, but there's loads more. So if you can think of any others, feel free to comment them down below or let me know what domain you work in or want to work in. I would love to see the variety of things that people are interested in in this field. So thanks again for joining me on today's video. My name is Georgia and I'm signing off.